And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, November 19th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we present here can be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And we were out visiting Native American artists this weekend at the Harmony Cafe in Green Bay, Wisconsin. You can find six of those musical artists and groups at the new IndianCountryNews.com website and in the Indian Country TV section. And while there, we ran into a couple friends like Richie Plass, who was talking about a new project on the shores of Lake Michigan on the west side at Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And here we go with that interview. I'm ready. Uh, Richie Plass, tell us a little bit about what's going on here at the Harmony Cafe in Green Bay, Wisconsin, this November 2012. Well, again, it's our annual uh, gathering. We have the exhibit here at Bittersweet Winds. Uh, it's been here since Thursday, it'll be here until Wednesday, and of course today, starting just in a bit here, will be the live music. We've got seven bands coming in, selling Indian tacos, fried bread, we've got haircuts, so if you need a haircut, we got that too. Can I just take a ponytail trim? <laughs> sure, sure, no problem. Um, we've got a silent auction, raffles, but what I really want to talk about is uh, I've, been, I've been honored to be part of a project that's going on right between Manitowoc and Two Rivers. And the name of the project is uh, Spirit of the Rivers. And I'm gonna introduce some gentlemen here that can talk more in detail where it came from and what's going on. Um, but what it is, they, and if I understand this correctly, they actually wanted to acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of not only that area, but Wisconsin and the country. And so uh, there's some sculptors, sculptures gonna go up. And uh, we're lucky enough to have the sculptor who did these, who was born and raised in Manitowoc. And uh, I'm gonna pass it on a little bit later. But I'd like to introduce Tom. Tom is Tom. on the board of directors, so Tom, come on in. And why don't you take it a little bit further from Rich, where I started? Uh, Richie, we, uh, I'm going to hand it over to him, but tell mm -hmm. us about what you know about Manitowoc. Manitowoc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Manitowoc. Oh, the place uh, of the spirits. Place you know? of the spirits, yeah. right. That, uh, in Ojibwe, right. in Ojibwe, we would say Manitowoc or Manituk. Uh, Menominee, I believe, is Mani Manitou or Ma yeah, Manitouhawk. And again, it's a place of the spirits. They also say it's where the spirits walked. It goes both ways. Because again, that's part of ancestral Menominee land, but then there were other nations that came in after that, and we shared that, that place in that time. So this is all coming out of the setting of uh, uh, Eastern Wisconsin? Yep, exactly. Okay, so let's take it. This is who now you're going to introduce? Tom, Mr. Tom Van Horn. Okay, Tom, tell us a little bit of what organization you're with or what you're doing here today with Richie Ploss, of all people. Well, I, I'm the treasurer of Spirit of the Rivers. Uh, it's, my, it's my charge to uh, help with the fundraising to enable uh, Skip Wallen to, uh, to finish the, the sculpture. Okay, and what kind of uh, sculpturing are we talking about? Well, we're talking about uh, three Indian figures, a male, a female, uh, an elder leading the way, pointing the way, uh, and uh, the male is portaging a canoe uh, coming out of Lake Michigan at uh, a place called Forget-Me-Not Creek, which interestingly enough has a history of being one of the uh, pathways that the Indians used to get to the, uh, to the lake, both by the stream itself and uh, as a pathway along the stream. So I've never heard of Forget Me Not Creek, so apparently it's been somewhat forgotten about for uh, some time, and you're going to tell me a little bit about what's significant about that? Well, so much so that Forget Me Not Creek was, uh, is now a culvert coming into Lake Michigan underneath uh, uh, State Highway 42. Uh, it, we hope at some point in the future, and it's in the, in the distant future, to have the Forget Me Not Creek uncovered. Uh, Forget Me Not Creek, as I said, was a uh, historically a, a path that the Indians uh, used. And uh, what can you tell me about what occurred along that, uh, we'd say, pathway, uh, Indian superhighway back in its days, perhaps? Well, 
you know, the, the waterways uh, and, and uh, foot traffic were the ways that uh, our Indians in eastern Wisconsin uh, traveled, so it was very important. Uh, the canoe is sort of a, a symbol of uh, the ancient mariner. We have the Wisconsin Maritime Museum in Manitowoc, uh, but what they don't have uh, Wisconsin's ancient mariner. There is very little uh, mention of the Indians. Uh, that's going to be changed uh, drastically, I think, at least uh, in Manitowoc with the uh, advent of the Spirit of the Rivers. Uh, it, it's going to be a legacy piece for uh, Mr. Wallen, who is a world-famous sculptor, has done sculptures all over the world, uh, Geneva, Switzerland, in, uh, at the Carter Library in Georgia, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, the World Bank. He has done both the 25th anniversary sculpture and the 50th anniversary sculpture of Alaska's statehood. Uh, but we're fortunate enough that he was, uh, he went to the same high school as my daughter. Uh, and that is another level of importance of the sculpture is uh, to show anyone who sees it that this can be done by just ordinary people. It's, by the way, uh, not a figure of uh, important people, it is a figure of ordinary people, all three figures. If uh, someone was interested in helping you out with this project, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, they can call me uh, in Manitowoc. My telephone number is 920-684-1214, and I would be glad to, uh, to, to share with them some ideas of how they can share their time, uh, their talent, and also their treasure. Um, one last question. In, in this uh, focusing on the canoe and the waterways along there, have... Uh, Will there be a component that looks at the engineering of canoes? I understand that when people actually look at the engineering components of canoes, they're pretty astounded as what, what's all went into them to make them work and function either as passenger ships or cargo ships. Well, I think Skip can, can talk more about that because he has spent uh, the better part of uh, a year and a half studying uh, not only the, the canoe and how it's made and, and uh, and what its purpose was on the Great Lakes, but also uh, the Native Indians and their uh, and their uh, their dress. Okay, thank you very much. You want to introduce them? Go ahead yes. and uh, bring them in it's here. It's my pleasure to introduce Skip Wallen. It's my pleasure to know Skip Wallen. Skip, thanks for joining with us today. We're in the Harmony Cafe in Green Bay, and. Uh, we want to pick your brain a little bit about what's going on here all the way back. Well, not, not as far back as Noah's Ark, but we'll start with uh, Noah's Canoe, okay? So tell me a little bit of what's inspiring you to uh, get this thing going. Well, uh, you touched on it a moment ago. First of all, it's the elegant technology of the birch bark canoe. And it turns out that the birch bark canoe was as important to the cultures of the Great Lakes and to transport in this area as the horse was in the American West. This canoe, this uh, wonderful lightweight uh, canoe made right from the products of the forest was the key to life in the Great Lakes area. And, and not just, uh, when you say key to life, not just trade and commerce as a uh, Business endeavor? Uh, did it? Would it? Uh, would you say it helped feed people? It helped feed, bring food in. It helped bring food out. It, it uh, escorted diplomats in. Those kinds of things. W what have you seen with your research over the years on this canoe, especially down in this area here with the, the name of the creek? Uh, don't oh, forget, forget me. me not, forget me not creek. It works as an allegory too uh, for the first people of this area. Forget me not. Um, of course, for harvesting rice, for fishing, uh, for traveling to and from hunting areas, for cultural reasons such as gathering at a fish camp or visiting. Canoe was just uh, the means to do all of those things. And unlike uh, dugout canoes, now I'm <clears throat> most of my life has been spent in Alaska, and I'm very familiar with the uh, cedar and spruce canoes. Of, of the far north, but compared to a birch bark canoe, that's a pretty heavy craft. It's not something that you can pick up and toss on your shoulders and go over a height of land to an adjoining creek or lake. 
Indeed. And so these, uh, tell us a little bit about technically what's going into these sculptures in and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some pictures of them after we're done talking with you, but tell us a little bit about what's going in. Would you go ahead and explain what, what's behind us here? Is yes, it? of course. Can you pick these yeah, up? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's start uh, over here. Now, these photographs are of maquettes or study models. These are not the full-sized figures. What we do is we, we sculpt these at a manageable size, such as a tabletop size. And then we'll scale them up to, th this figure will be 10 feet high. And the canoe will be in proportion, so about 20 feet long. And I'm going to just duck over here for a moment. I don't know if you can zero in on this. Yes, we can. This is um, another sculpture that I have done for the, uh, in Fairbanks, Alaska. Is that you working down there in the That's right side by the guy's knee on his right left here, knee? Right there. And uh, so you can get a sense of scale. This is 10 feet from uh, Excellent. toe to head. Excellent. So, so and that, that's about the size of this one is that's as well? Not, that's what we're planning for this one. Now, <clears throat> I'll go on to the other figures in a moment, but kind of an interesting uh, problem for a sculptor with this figure is that the, the uh, portager's face is in shadow. Now the site that we have on Lake Michigan is just wonderful. The sun will come up behind these figures and pass in the morning and pass over so that by afternoon they'll be lighted, their, their faces will be lighted. But he's always going to be in shadow. So I'm planning to put a little light up here in the bow of the birch bark canoe. And the light will play down along the ribs and illuminate the face of the portage. And I think it will end lend a rather uh, dramatic aspect to the sculpture. Then going over here, <coughs> you can see the, the woman here who is accompanying him. They've just waded out of the stream or out of Lake Michigan, so she's got her skirt hitched up just a little bit, and mm -hmm. she's carefully carrying her moccasins, uh, because of course she doesn't want them to, to get wet. They're already conformed to her feet. I'm thinking in the final piece, in the large piece, uh, to color the bronze from about this point down and perhaps the hem of her uh, buckskin shirt to simulate the effect. It'll be slightly darker than the rest and that will simulate the effect of water. They've just waded up out of the water. And <clears throat> in front of these two figures, we're going to have a tribal elder. And, and the elders, of course, are resides the knowledge of the tribe, where the tribe has been and where it should be going, both figuratively and in an allegorical sense. And how long will this all take when you're working on this? What <laughs> do you got in mind? We're aiming for 2014. 2014, yeah. okay. And if someone wanted to talk to you at all about this project, how would we use the same uh, yes, the, phone the, number the and number everything? That Tom gave you, I'd be happy to talk with anyone that's interested. And we've had guidance from at least six of the Wisconsin tribes have contributed ideas and uh, details about the construction of, of bark canoes. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining with us. and. We'll uh, get this presented very soon. Richie, I want to say, okay, if uh, people wanted to connect with you, because that's the only thing that's not on here right oh, at the minute, okay. give us a little information and so the world can touch out and uh, oh, sure. ask questions. Um, you can reach me by email, and it's just my name, RichiePlass at Yahoo.com, R-I-C-H-I-E-P-L-A-S-S at Yahoo.com, or you can go to our website, which is Changing Winds plural, changingwinds.org, and you can reach me there too. So, uh, either way. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country. On this edition of the Native News Update, we want to say thanks for joining with us.